Okay, in pretty much all standard stats books, like stats for business and economics, stats for psychologists, uh, you're given a result, the sampling distribution of the sample proportion. Now these books always give you the result for when the sample size is, lo is, uh, is large, so when n is large. Uh, what I'm going to do in this video is sh show you a more kind of um, rare result in that you can't, anyway, rare result in the fact that you can't find them in intro textbooks. The sampling distribution of the sample proportion when n is small. So we start first with the review of the sampling distribution of the sample proportion when n is large. Remember, n here stands for like the sample size. Um, and then we'll go to the result and show that the distribution, the sampling distribution of the sample proportion when our sample is small is a rescaled binomial. So by the end of the video you'll know what a rescaled binomial is. The review first. So here I just present the result that kind of you see in textbooks on lecture notes. So let p hat denote the proportion of successes in a, in a random sample of n observations from a population in which proportion of successes is p. Then for large n, thing is on that we have approximately that the sample proportion is normally distributed. That's the mean, that's the variance. It's the result that you all know. Um, so we can then use this to do hypothesis testing, calculate confidence intervals for the sample proportion in large samples, etc. Note that, again, I say that this is a result uh, for the sample proportion um, when n is large. And secondly, the result is approximate. And this holds approximately using the central limit theorem. OK, then moving on to the main result. What happens when n is small? OK. In a, let's just recap. So in a sample, the sample proportion denoted by p hat is the number of successes out of n trials divided by n. Okay, If you look at it, that's like an average. So I write it over here like an average. But the xi's, what do they stand for? They are independent Bernoulli's. Remember Bernoulli trials are just uh, like success or failure in each trial. Uh, and they have the same parameter, p, probability of success. That's not p hat note, it's the true parameter. And um, I've written here in orange, it's their IID. Independent, I've already written here. Uh, identically distributed because they're both, they're all Bernoulli's with the same parameter. When I write I here, I'm saying, of course, that's for each I. So it's for I equal to 1, 2, all the way to N. OK, so to break this thing down, to get the result, we'll do it into two parts. First, write down what is the distribution of the sum of xi, and then we can write down the distribution of x bar, which let's use the word x bar now instead of p hat because it's uh, you can see that that's where it is. Um, yes, so to recap, we want the distribution of this guy here, p hat, the sample proportion, when n is small, and we've tied it down to n here by writing as sum of independent Bernoulli's uh, with the same number of success in each trial divided by n. OK, the result from A is a result that we all know, that the sum of uh, Bernoulli's, independent Bernoulli's, is going to be a binomial. So maybe let's just write that here. Sum of xi, and to keep things simple, uh, I am not I'm not going to kind of introduce much in the web notation until the end. So uh, let me get rid of that. So what we have is sum of xi, right? Um, so we've got n trials. So agree that we can have no successes out of n, one success out of n, two successes out of n, all the way to. And is there a limit? Yes, there is, because it's out of n trials. So we can have maximum of n and that's when got to, um, number of all, all of them are successes in n trials. What's the probability? Well we can write that down the table here but it's easy just to write that 
because we know the formula already for a binomial. Okay, xi equal to, well, I'm using a capital X to denote the random variable, and let's just use little xi to denote the actual value, okay? I can use neater notation, but I'm trying to keep things simple so I don't want to introduce different notation at this stage. So, can I just do over here that this is like of the form that you've all seen before. Your lecturer writes big X or big Y equal and then the actual realized value. Okay, that is the actual numerical value. So that's the numerical value here. Okay, and then we know what binomial looks like. So we write that down. So XI here, probability success P in a sum of little XI. Failure, 1 minus P. And we've got N uh, minus sum of XI's of those. Okay, so that's the result, that's A. Rub this out. Alright, that's A. Next on to B. So then we can use this result to write, to, to find the um, sampling distribution of X bar. Now, let's just slide over here we see that p hat is related to this guy here, sum of xi over n. So we want here x bar big x bar which is equal to sum of little xi over n. Alright, so it's out of n, so it's like if there is no success out of n trials, that's a zero divided by n, which is 0. One success is the same as saying 1 out of n, okay, looking at this, 2 out of n, dot dot dot, all the way, well, the, it's all successes, that's n out of n, so that's 1. Uh, n out of n, which is 1. Alright, so, look, if I want the distribution of x bar here, seeing that an outcome is zero is the same as seeing that sum of xi is zero. Seeing that the outcome of x bar is one over n is the same as seeing sum of xi is equal to one. So you're saying so what? So what is because we want the distribution of x bar, we know the distribution of sum of xi because it's right here, it's binomial. So, and these probabilities therefore must be the same because as I said, seeing this is the same as seeing that, seeing this is the same as seeing that. Can I say, just finish this for xi equals 0, 1 to n. Okay, that's the full thing. So, let's just state two things, we'll write down two things here. First, we observe, we've just I just said that seeing probability seeing a result of X bar uh, notation is very important guys when you're trying to simplify something. So at the moment I'm using non standard notation to try to present things easier to understand. So x bar uh, is equal to little xi over n is the same as saying that probability from the top part of the table that sum of xi here is equal to a particular value. Okay, that's what I've just said here. So seeing that this is equal to one of these guys like this is the same as saying looking at the sum of xi is equal to uh, that basically just n times this. Next things to note is that the uh, we know that the sum of xi has a probability mass function of a binomial. Binomial. x bar is the same as sum of xi but it's divided by n. So it too is a binomial.
reason is that the um, informally speaking that the distribution is based on the sum of xi isn't it if you divide through just by a constant like n that's not going to change that's not going to change the um, kind of distribution so we've got a binomial here so the thing is also going to be binomial x by is also going to be binomial because you just divided sum of xi by n all right so we have pretty much got the base we've got the key now to write down the distribution of x bar. Looking at the first bullet point and with this uh, binomial um, mass function for s sum of xi we can write probability now that I'm doing the sampling distribution of x bar okay so probability of x bar equals to little x bar is equal something which is going to look like this because it's a binomial and for well it's for the points that we already said for little x bar equal to 0 1 over n 2 over n all the way dot 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 to 1 so I've got to fill in this blank let's leave this combinatorial thing now, let's just start with this p first p now whatever I write in this line it's going to be equal to this uh, for these cases okay they've got for these uh, they have to match up so and it's all got to be in terms of small x bar because like that's the it's the function of that okay so it can't be in terms of sum of xi like this is but otherwise the two statements must be the same so if we so what if I write down here must be equal to this, but it's just basically rephrased, not in terms of sum of xi, but in terms of x bar. Um, so if we look at sum of xi here, that's p to the power of sum of xi, well, xi is related to x bar, remember, through the formula, the relation, remember x bar is equal to sum of xi over n. Therefore, if we take n up to the other side, that's a relation and that's what we're going to use. So sum of xi is as n x bar so we write n x bar right here. Okay I've just done the key thing so now I'm going to just repeat that whole thing so again 1 minus p n I'm just copying this down but I want to rephrase this in terms of x bar okay but minus sum of xi is equal to n x bar so I write again uh, do I have to do it in a different color? No uh, n x bar, okay, just like here. And then what about over here? Well, replace the sum xi by n x bar. I think I said the key thing um, just casually. Um, I guess that's the best way to do it um, in saying that, yeah, these two probabilities have to be the same. Uh, sum of xi. Okay, it's, got, it's a function of the sum of xi's, but when we're looking at sample uh, sam the x bar, the PMF has to be in terms of x bar. Since the two probabilities, of sum of xi and x bar, have to be uh, have to be like the, the same um, for given values of the x's, so all we're doing is rewriting the sum of xi's in terms of x bar. Okay, and this is the result. We've done it. This guy we call the rescaled binomial because it's a binomial, but just can you see they are just it's just rescaled. They're not integers; they're just uh, but still discrete all the way up to one. Finally, to tie up tidy up the notation, see what I, what I said is that I didn't want to introduce too much notation to make things simpler. But usually you won't see this. So sum of x i, uh, you'll see that they'll write it as something like call that big Y then this will be little y and then this will be little y and that will be little y that will be little y okay I've just done it so that I've spelled that exactly what it is but that's little y so that's more succinct here and then this instead of calling it x bar or something like that they'll call it 
you can call it something else like big W just giving you an alternative way to you don't have to exact you know main things understand what I've just done here so that will be little w uh, expand will be little w little w and so on that's just what I've done in blue is just representing it so it looks a bit more neater uh, okay so um, that's it hope you made some sense of that this kind of what we've done here can be uh, done to other kinds to other kind of means uh, where it's sum uh, where x bar is equal to the sum of x i over n, where the x i could follow some other distribution, for example, Poisson. Okay, so uh, have a go of, of uh, maybe that last example I've just given you. All right, good luck.